Hello everyone, no respawns here, hope you're doing well. So we're back in Civilization 6 and I want to have a good ramble about the diplomacy feature and how I personally love it, a lot of people hate it, and I think it's just that you're kind of shit right now. Not in a kind of confrontational way, I just think it's so different to how it used to be, especially mainly with the agendas that people are like, this makes no sense, it's stupid, it's not stupid, it's just different in a much better way. It definitely needs some tweaking, that is for sure. There are certain features that I think need to be... Some grace periods definitely need to be instigated, but the overall premise of it is absolutely fantastic, fantastic, and it's working really, really well. So for those of you who haven't really kind of maybe really had a good look at it, what's... And what people are complaining about, I see, as you see here, my relationships are predominantly on the denounced, unfriendly, with a couple of close allies, right? Now, loads of people are hating this right now, especially on Reddit. Um, I think it's maybe about 50-50 split, actually. A lot of people, though, are noticeable people, are kind of pissed off because they feel that I haven't done anything to piss these civilizations off, yet they hate me because I'm not as faithful or because I didn't do X or Y, yada, 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 yada. And I think people who have that or are of that opinion are wrong. And the reason why I think they're wrong is because... It's basically, for example, I've played a very passive game, right? You know, it's probably, God, this is a, this is a for save from earlier I've gone. I actually, I think it's, I think I've got another hundred turns and I actually win the, win the game uh, culture victory. It's only on King, I think. It's not very hard. Um, but I think basically some people think that if you play kind of quite a insular kind of tanky turtling game like this, as long as you don't, you know, warmonger and all that jazz and just, you know, kind of don't step on it on toes, you can be friendly or at least kind of neutral with everyone, which I think is very, very, just not very fun for starters. And also, largely, I would argue, very unrealistic because you've got to understand that, you know, as a civ simulation game, you can't, that there's more than just what you, the leader, are doing to upset you know, the civilizations and the leaders that you're up against. You know, the real world is absolutely fucking crazy, and races and groups of people hate each other for a multitude of reasons, even if maybe they're not in active war. And I feel that, even though it kind of maybe comes across as irrational with a few of them, I actually quite like this, because it reflects the fact that, for starters, in the definite early and mid-game, you shouldn't be friendly with anyone. At best, you should tolerate each other, because this is a much more unpleasant and uncivilized time of human history but also in the later period it's it's almost a lot of posturing and that's another thing i quite like about this is the fact is that for example me and harold here he, he was destined for war to be honest he aggressively took Leventa twice and i recaptured and then liberated it we were destined to war but we've not attacked each other for about a hundred turns now because we're also dug in that if we are going to attack each other, it's going to be a really committed, aggressive war. So all of our denouncing is more of a posturing kind of situation, which I really like because it quite reflects how in real life, you know, we're denouncing Russia, we're denouncing China, we're denouncing, you know, Saudi Arabia, they're denouncing us, Korea's denouncing everyone, <laughs> uh, North Korea specifically, sorry. And it's just, it is for me a reflection, an exaggerated, but reflection but still a reflection of the real world and i think more accurate than the opposite which is basically as long as don't bother anyone no one will bother me and it's like well no that's not true at all you know the, the whole you know turtling up you're just basically having a massive military so the ai goes oh well i'm not going to attack them and basically not war de decking anyone and just you know kind of focusing on one certain kind of very insular victory if that just, if I personally think that shouldn't make you everyone's at least okay person. And I prefer the way it is like this. Now, another reason why I like the agendas function is because it adds an actual planning and strategy element that breaks away. It makes you act in outside of the agenda, kind of counterproductive ways if you're going about trying to please someone, which is what I really, really like. So, for example, let's look at Tamiris, because this is the person I tried to make my friend, but it just wasn't going to happen. So, Tamiris here is, um, like Civilization to declare a friend. That's what I was trying to get to. Hate Civilizations who backstab and declare surprise wars. No, I didn't do anything. 
The issue was I was not devout. So for those who don't know how the agendas work, you're going to have their main agenda, which I believe is linked... Yeah, I think it's linked to the leader. So that means that, for example... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely actually because Pericles has the Delian League um, agenda, but I know uh, the Lady of Sparta, she has a different one. Now, anyway, to my rest, the issue was that she wanted me to have lots of faith. So what I ended up doing in the early game was I was determined, because I basically had Tamaris. Later, I actually had Gilgamesh, although here, who is my bro. He's actually Samiria, he's the, the Civ I'm playing in my current game right now, and a much harder, I'm playing an Immortal now. Um, and uh, he's, he's really good fun, because I'm playing quite an aggressive science victory. It's, it's quite fun, though I'm getting denounced by everyone, because I'm not making any friends, because I'm only in the first... I'm not even at Medieval yet. Anyway, so if you can see right here, you can actually see what I tried to do. So I went for a culture victory in this one. However, I've got one, two, three. And I don't think I have... No, I don't have a fourth. But I have three holy sites. When I really would probably, if I had these four, would have had two. And the reason being is I actually attempted to please her. Now, I didn't succeed, the reason being is because she had the devout, I just, I think because of the fact that she expanded quite early, so she was producing a lot of faith, there was just no chance of me catching up. And occasionally she does like me, and then it kind of steamrolled, and then it just kind of, you know, picked a momentum, and now she just dislikes me because our borders are really close. But I like the fact I tried. Now, some people don't like it, because, oh, no, but it's impossible to keep them happy. It's not impossible. You just have to really think. Now, I failed in that one, admittedly. I did just give up. I was Because I was focusing so much on getting early culture, I didn't, for example, prioritize my faith structures building, building them. Had I prioritized them, I would have been fine. And had I prioritized, for example, building up a fleet and letting Leventa stay uncontested, which I, I, I could have let Harold take Leventa, focused on a bit more faith, and built up a fleet. I could have got to Myris to the point where she likes me with my faith production, declared friend, and then that would have been that even if my faith had dropped, because then she would have still had that legacy of being a declared friend. For example, if you look at Teddy here, oh Teddy, I love you Teddy, you glorious bastard you. As you can see, declared friend, ally, trade relations, all of these things add up. Now, ignoring obviously the fact that you know, he likes peaceful civ, so there's that. Um, but we've got different governments, and we're still quite high. You know, we're still in the friendly, to the point where I know later on he declares friendship again, and then we ally again, as I am with Cleo here. See, allied with Cleo, but we've got different governments. And all of this kind of builds up, and that's what you've the way you've got to look at it. Basically, building up a relationship with a civ shouldn't be something you do passively, and I think that's why I didn't really like or... I prefer this to Civilization 5 in the fact is that you... Oh, by the way, Tamaris is... <laughs> God, Marie just stuck. Um, but I like the way that it's something you actually have to plan and think about. Now, definitely, definitely some tweaking. This is a Civ game, it's, and it's just been released. That tweaking needs to happen. But not... But I think people's main criticisms, or a lot of the ones I've seen, are kind of largely unfair. Um, actually, Scythia, by the way, incidentally, the reason why I don't think I was ever going to get her with a devout is because Scythia obviously gets these, um, what are they called? The Kern things. Um, it meant that she was just slamming these things down willy-nilly, so that was never going to happen. Anyway, she doesn't normally have the devout one, so it's grand. But anyway, yeah, you've got to... So yeah, I like the overall function of it a lot, right? And there are tweaking needs to be done. Now, in terms of the tweaking I personally think needs to be done, and a lot of people do agree with me on this, I've read, I've read your comments, um, that having some form of grace period, I think, is very important, because a lot of them, Congo, for example, unless you commit to commit to converting him to your religion, even if it's an early on, he's going to hate you. He's denounced me so many times for not converting me, converting him to his, his my religion, because I just couldn't get at him, and I wasn't really playing a religious game. However, a lot of my games I've started quite close to him, and what happens is the second you found your religion, the turn afterwards he'll denounce you. Or not denounce you, he'll just complain, he'll do that complaining scream. And then a few turns later he might actually eventually denounce you because I didn't spread my religion to him. And once he's denounced you, it then gets worse and worse and you get into kind of a denouncing spiral. 
And because I, I can't be asked, because he's too far away and way too needy and other people are attempting to convert him. Basically, with him, you have to commit to converting him to religion to keep him as your friend. I think the only person he's close to is... Yeah, he was very close to Cleo here. I think... Yeah, I think he's close to Cleo. Because... Yeah. And that's the thing. You've got to look at each of these cities, these civilizations and go, right, okay. If, I'm, if I start near these people... I need to do these, this, th these things to keep them happy. And once I've made them like me, I can then make them love me. And then after that, I can be a little bit less... I don't have to be as focusing on that one person. And I really like that. I like this lack of passion. And it is realistic in a way. I like the fact that everyone's denouncing each other because it is, as I said, just posturing. But yeah, um... But yeah, I think a definite a grace period would be really grand, especially as well. Uh, Catherine Dimitri of France is another one where, okay, granted she does seem to like it when you basically use the diplomacy screen in any way, shape, or form. So she likes when you make trade deals, or if you you know just tell people to stop convert. She just seems to like you talking to other civs. But again, she likes it more when you have spies, and until you actually get spies, it's very very difficult to kind of get her to kind of really like you. Anyway, let me know what you guys think and how you've dealt with diplomacy for so far. I know some of them are incredibly irrational. Uh, for example, Montezuma is just such a little bitch. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> he's so jelly. Incidentally, he, he's a fun one to do if you try, because basically, you, you, you know, for example, I start, if I started next to him, at my two wells, just make sure that every other resource prioritize him as a trade part and he'll love you. And if you try and trade anything with him, with anyone else, and Montezuma's near you, and you want to make him happy, just make sure that you go, okay, he's got truffles, tea, and citrus, just make sure that you only trade for those things off other people, don't try and get something else, and he'll just progressively like you, and then it's really easy, but however, obviously, he, he gets kind of quite moody, um, but he is a bit of a, a bit of a weird one. Anyway, anyway, I'll leave that there, it's a bit of a rambly one, this, but anyway, basically, diplomacy is absolutely awesome, could do tweaks. I'm looking forward to it, but it's not shit. You're just shit. Get get good, scrub. Anyway, as always, follow me on Twitter at no respawns. What I'll see you up to. Um, I'm gonna have a Fallout video up tomorrow. I'm gonna try and squeeze in potentially something for Skyrim. I'm just trying to think what I can do. I don't want to just rehash effective videos that we've done before. I'll think of something. I am nearly ready to start streaming again, and I think maybe Skyrim might be the game I stream just because. It's a good fun game, and you know, we've all seen it before, it's grand. Anyway, I'll talk to you lovely people soon. You take care.